I saw Daniel in America in the World Cup, so I'd, I'd seen him. I saw him score a, a wonderful goal. Um, who was that against Daniel when he against, smashed uh, Greece. Against Greece. I was at the game, yeah. and uh, I, I saw the power in the man then, and then when he signed for Everton, you know, great. But it, once you get to know the man as well as the player, he, he, he was a great influence. And of course, he, he famously came on in the semi-final and scored two goals. I told him to warm up. He thought I said, you're on. And he was on. <laughs> so, uh, we was going to come on to that. Well, obviously, we cannot have the two of you in the same room without the most famous moment between the two. So, Joe, give, give us your account. Well, it, 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 it goes like this, that Paul Rideout's gone down on the far side of the pitch. Oh, and I've yeah. said to Daniel, get warmed up. And then Les Helm used to have a, a code, you know, we didn't like earphones or any of that yeah. nonsense. Les was a very <laughs> basic man at times, and it was either that, that, or like that, that yeah. you know. So, But he's given me that for Paul Rideout. Mm. He thinks he's, so he's going to take him off the pitch and treat him. I've said to Daniel, and he said he was that desperate to get him, and I'm so pleased that he did substitute himself. <laughs> but realistically, Paul Rideout, I, I, it wasn't that I didn't want to get Daniel on, I just wanted to see what was happening. But he was so keen, came on, scored two, and the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> Daniel, what's your memories of that game? You know, I remember, I remember quite all right when Paul went down, and we, we, I saw. For for me, I thought less, less said, you know, uh, yeah. you know, uh, five minutes, yeah. and you know, and then. They, get warmed they, up, they, Daniel. Warmed, uh, He's out. You know, and then Jimmy was the, the, the coach from the reserve. Yeah, you know, Jimmy and, Gabriel. Yeah, Jimmy Gabriel just gave me the paper and yes. I handed it over. And, yeah. and I just walked in and I saw how Joe got up from his seat and I looked back at him and but I've already crossed the line. But I say again, <laughs> I, I didn't, it wasn't that I didn't want Daniel long. I just wanted to see because you know? we were playing well at the time. You know, we were, we'd come back into the game. They had a... A dubious penalty, mm. the only goal we conceded yeah. in the whole cup run, and then uh, oh, you know Daniel's going on. I just didn't want to play quite that quickly, but I'm so glad he did. Uh, the players they had, you know, they, they, the players they had, you know, I think everybody thought we were going to lose that game because sports were on fire. They were really on fire. Sheringham, Klinsman, Bombay, you know, yeah, it's incredible. Were but side. you know, the good thing about us from you know from the training throughout yeah. that week. To the locker room at Allen Road, yeah. that belief that we're going to win that game was right there. Mm -hmm. And you can see it from the first second when the referee blew. Yeah. And you can see the way everybody was walking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even the players on the bench, you know, that's the most beautiful thing about, you know, uh, the coach here. You know, uh, the atmosphere that he brings into the, into the teams makes a lot of difference. And it contributed in that, in our success in winning the FA Cup, you know, for sure. And people don't know, I, I nearly signed him at Manchester City when I was manager. I was desperate to sign him at Manchester City. Uh, shall we be political and say he had a very unfavourable report on an uh, operation that he'd had done and we couldn't sign him. I was desperate to sign Daniel. Mm. I tell you what, I was desperate to sign Daniel the player and Daniel the person because he's, he was one of those rare people who could light a dressing room up. He had a great dance. He used to <laughs> dance. He did, honestly. Ne Neville Southall had this now 56 or whatever it was. And I remember Wigfield was number one. Wow, and that. Yeah. But the House of Pain used to come on, would jump around, and that was just key for Daniel to stand up and give us all there. Uh, but he, he had the place buzzing. He was a, a great, what would you call it, a, a great igniter of the dressing room. What do you remember about that most, like Joe's first game? We were struggling at the time, weren't we? And then Joe came in and... Yeah, we, we were we were well, we were really really struggling. We weren't just struggling; we were really struggling. You know, uh, you, you can see the impact from the first game. You know, you can definitely it was against Liverpool, eh? Yeah, you Liverpool. Know, it was a Liverpool a derby game, and it's not the it's not the game that any manager want to come for his first game. You know, but at the same time, it was a good. You know, a game to have if you can pick three points, and then it will make well, a difference into. I think, Daniel, yeah. we, uh, before the game, I, I, I do remember sitting down with Peter Johnson, the chairman, in the stands. Mm. I always watched the, the first half from the stands, and uh, he said to me, do you, "Do you think we can get a point here today?" Mm. And I said, "I'm expecting to win, chairman." <laughs> and I think he looked like me, like I was an alien. You know? <laughs> couple of years that you were boss, how, how special was that? It was a, a dream for someone who stood on the paddock and uh, someone who played for the, the, the team, obviously very proudly at one stage the youngest player in the club's history when I was 16 and then to be manager as well, I mean 
I must be the only manager who's taken over a club, never had a contract or even uh. discussed terms. I just said, yeah. Well, well, you never can. You know, you never can. But he always had a great enthusiasm for the game, and a great self-belief. I mean, look at it, look at the man now. He's, he looks fit enough to play now. You know, I just, I bet you're not a couple of kilos heavier than when you played, are you? Yeah, just about three, just three. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. That's three. And what do you take from Joe in your coaching? The qualities. Right, you know, the hard work definitely, you know, uh, believing in yourself, you know you can do it, ne never never put your head down and just keep going, and that, that's the word that always come out of his, his, his uh, you know, his lips, and of course, whenever you cross that white line, it's never, I know, when you cross that white line, your he, life, your life. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he always says it, and like I did say earlier, those things I always take forward to my young players. The best substitution I never made. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you were here at the club when Daniel first signed. What's your first memories of him? First memories is his first goal he scored, and he kept telling us he had this strange dance <laughs> that he that he did when he when it, to celebrate a goal. And I remember he scored at the park end end, if I'm if I'm right. That's right. And I jumped on his back, <laughs> and he couldn't do the dance, and he was like, "Get off, get off!" And he couldn't do his dance. But but we saw the dance a few more times after that. So that's my first memories of Daniel. And John, yours. Just in and, in and around the dressing room, Daniel was was brilliant, brilliant fit for us at the time. He was full of life, great fun, big beam and smile, fitted in straight away. Uh, great for banter, you know. He, he, you know, he pull his leg, he pull ours. He was just brilliant around the lads, fantastic. And it was a great time at the club because that period when we were struggling, and then everyone remembers that memorable season whereby we were towards the bottom of the league. Joe came in, we won the derby, and then it just took off from there. It did, and we went on a, a great cup run, and, uh, and our league form improved as well at the same time. Um, one thing that stood out with that team, not just the fact that we escaped relegation and won the FA Cup, but the team spirit, I have to say, and, and, and I say it to all the young players now, it's the best team spirit I've ever experienced. Every, every player's home is open to the next. You know, he invites me to his house like one million times, and you know, I know his wife, I know his kids. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible memory. If you have that spirit in a team, definitely you should be very successful. You know, uh, he, when, Ro when Joe came in, he, you know, he told him what he wanted. And uh, we saw more of him, you know, as a player, you know, what he can do more. The confidence that he had, you know, in swinging those, uh, those crosses, those, those corner kicks, those set pieces. And, uh, you know, he took the team to the next level. And, of course, should I mention your name? Boldy. <laughs> wow! He was guilty. He was, he was, he was incredible in yeah. the middle. This one, he could, his, his energy in the middle was uh, was second to none. One thing I will say is, uh, I thought Unzi would be the strongest player I ever played with, but uh, Daniel was the, without doubt, the strongest. If you ever went alongside him, it was the strongest shoulder charge I think I've ever, ever it still experienced. Is. It still is. By I'm the not way. sure if it would be legal anymore, but it was certainly uh, it worked in that day. Must have been special because you went from bottom of the league to cup winners, and a lot of people forget the following season. Fantastic for how, how we struggled before then, finished sixth, and it was that was a fantastic campaign yeah, as well. Yeah, it was a couple of things really within that, so it, it, it gave us the confidence to go to places like Chelsea and feel that we could win. But having strikers up the top that up, up, up top that could get us goals anywhere, and also on the bench that could come on and change. So it was, it, it was a, a you know the, the team spirit. Joe's belief that he gave us that we could go and win anywhere. Bringing players in like Daniel, who were different, you know, different dimension. He, you know, I've talked about his, you know, his power, but his skill on the ball embarrassed me many times in training. But fortunately, you'd then see it on a on a Saturday, <laughs> which other players you know, on the opposition would be yeah. embarrassed. And I say we just felt we could go anywhere and 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 win, and to enjoy it at the same time was I think was the key. We had a laugh, we trained hard, but we had a laugh before, during and after yeah. and it was, it was a joy to come in. We talked about before enjoying coming into training every day because we did. Mm. It's as simple as that. All three of you are now coaches. Would you have guessed back then you'd go on to become those roles? Very difficult to say. Um, I, I, what I will say is when, when you've had the people that we've had um, working, who we work for, the likes of Willie Donaghy, Joe Royal, um, you can't help but pick up good traits from them. Um, and I think it's it's really important that if you've got good people around you as, as young players, as senior players, as as players finding your way, you're always going to pick up things from them. But um, you know, certainly Joe Joe's the finest manager I've worked under, without a shadow of a doubt. We're back in Europe this season, John. And uh, 
you, you guys played with each other in, in Europe. Do you, do you know what was special with anyone for when we beat Reykjavik 3-2 in Iceland about that day? Special for me. Apart from me scoring the sexy you, goal, of you, course. You all scored? Yeah. All three of you all scored? Scored? That yeah. Yeah. You're boring. You are boring are you telling us that fact, by the way. You could ask us any question in the world and you tell you ask us that. Well, he's, he's looking at me because it's the biggest <laughs> shot. Because you've never scored before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, just special memories in terms of favourite games from that era. What, what was there any stand out for you? Oh, well, it'd have to be the the semi final. I mean, that was a one great performance, and obviously Daniel was a massive part of that. And you know, I'm not sure he was meant to be going on or whatever, but I, I don't I don't care. And, and and it was a it was a magnificent performance that day. And there's so many you still see pictures of it now, and it, it, it's a great pictures, an amazing day, and a, and a great performance. And Probably a pinnacle, uh, well, obviously the cup final, but no, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I, in I, I think in, in England, I think playing for Everton, I think that, that that was the game. My first game, I know at home at Goodison scoring the one he did mention, <laughs> and the semi final, of course. I think, uh, I think that's the day. Like I did told you earlier, you know, growing up as an African in Africa is the FA Cup we know, mm. you know, and to be part of, you know, history to help a team win, you know, the trophy, it goes a long way. And just finally, for how proud this club's history is, what does it mean for the three of you that fans are always going to look back and think, remember you and, and what is a special moment in the club's history? Yeah, it, it's, it's why you play football. You know, we all play football to, to win and, and to win trophies and, and to have memories. And uh, again, to quote Joe Royal, rocking chair memories, you know, when you're old and you sit back and you think back on your career, you'll remember games like, we call it the ammo semi-final, don't we? Um, just just so much pride filled with with being a part of this wonderful football club absolutely and uh, we want them days back you know and uh, that's what we're all aspiring to do really at the club but a uh, uh, great time great great couple of performances really to beat tottenham and, and then man united uh, i think was, was 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 fantastic but actually fitting for that group of players at that, that time a fitting reward uh, and yeah good memories yeah, like I did said earlier, you know, once a blue, always a blue. You know, it's it's strange when I tell people I played for only two seasons here. Somebody asked me this morning, how how many seasons did you play? I said two. He said just two, mm -hmm. you know, because the love that uh, they have for me and I have for them, it's uh, it's second to none, and that's the most beautiful thing about it. And that's why we're still here. I'm not wearing the badge, but I'm a blue forever, and nobody can take that away from me. It was it was me that asked you about the two seasons. The two seasons, yeah. And it was because how much, how much bad gear did you wear in that <laughs> Hey, hey and it's still going on today. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, no. No, no, they, they, you know, I, I, I brought fashion into the team. You know, Duncan brought the madness. I brought fashion. <laughs>